The Indus Valley civilization was a Bronze Age culture that inhabited the northwestern regions of South Asia. Contemporary with ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley civilization had sophisticated urban planning and a detailed knowledge of metallurgy. There are thousands of archaeological sites and numerous well-preserved artifacts attributed to that culture. Just as with many other Bronze Age societies, the Indus Valley civilization went into decline around 4,200 years ago, a time often referred to as the 4.2 kilo year event due to the beginning of a severe global drought, which many experts think may have initiated this Bronze Age collapse. A new paper in the journal Communications, Earth and Environment provides startling new evidence to support this hypothesis. This video is in two parts. Firstly, I want to give an overview of the Indus Valley civilization and some of its characteristics. Secondly, I'll talk about the evidence for the Bronze Age collapse. If you're already familiar with the Indus Valley civilization, then go ahead and skip to the second part using the chapter navigation. Occupying the alluvial plain of the Indus River, the Indus Valley civilization appeared around 3,300 BCE and at its peak covered 1,500 kilometers, as well as having some cultural and economic influence over an even greater area. Archaeologists have split the chronology of the Indus Valley civilization's evolution into three phases, the early, the mature and the late Harappan, named after its type site. When archaeologists talk about a type site, they're referring to an excavated place whose features define a particular culture and time period. This chronology follows on from the pre-Harappan phase, which was characterized by early Neolithic farming, the most famous site of which is Mergar, dating back 9,000 years. Five major urban centers made up the Indus Valley civilization, alongside more than a thousand smaller settlements that have been found in archaeological excavations. These were Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro, Ganariwala, Dolavira, and Rakigahi. It's thought the largest cities had populations of anywhere between 30 and 60,000. The Indus Valley civilization practiced urban planning, which included sophisticated sewerage and drainage systems, large granaries, warehouses, and enormous city walls. Although it's not clear if the impressive walls were used as flood or enemy defenses. Unlike ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, no evidence for palaces or temples has been found. Houses appear to have been of a similar size and to all have had access to an individual well and connected drainage system. Some experts think this points to wealth equality. There's also no evidence for power structures and governance. However, the complex urban planning and architectural uniformity do hint at some sort of centralized administration. Artifacts point towards long distance trade being carried out and a lot of this was with Mesopotamia. Thousands of seals made from steatite have been excavated from Indus Valley sites. They depict animals and humans, sometimes hybrids of the two, and many are carved with symbols from the undeciphered Indus script. The human figures and hybrid carvings may show deities, providing evidence for the religion of the Indus Valley civilization, which is not well understood. Certain statuettes may also reflect its belief system, such as this female figurine and this horned deity, both of which certainly look like cult figures when we compare them to finds from other Bronze Age sites around the world. Horn symbolism comes up in multiple cultures and multiple time periods, often in funerary contexts, but also in other types of site. But since there are no palaces or temples in any of the Indus Valley cities, it's not clear where any rituals and ceremonies would have been carried out. A structure known as the Great Bath was excavated at Mohenjo-Daro, which may have been used for ritual cleansing. It measures 12 by 7 meters and is entered by two staircases. A building opposite with several rooms and terraces may have been a part of the complex and suggests a public function. But it's quite possible that rituals were carried out at home or in open air sites. One of the most famous seals to center on the religion discussion is known as the Pashupati seal and depicts an individual in the center wearing a horned headdress. They appear to be in the yogic lotus position. 
four wild animals surround them, an elephant, a tiger, a buffalo and a rhinoceros. This seal has intrigued scholars, some of which think it might show that the Indus Valley civilization's religion was a predecessor to later Hinduism in the region, but this is widely debated. The Indus script has more than 400 signs, so it's thought to be logo sibilic. Many of these clearly show objects from the natural world, others are abstract. No bilingual texts exist which can help with the translation, so it's still is an undeciphered script. It's also not clear what the spoken language of the Indus Valley civilization was. Since many of the surviving inscriptions are short, they may simply be merchant's marks rather than a fully fledged written language system. As you know, one of the things that really fascinates me about the Neolithic is the lack of a written language that could help shed light on the motivations of the megalith builders. But similarly, even though many Bronze Age and later cultures did have written languages, they are often undecipherable, so there's still a lot of mystery about these ancient peoples too. From 2200 BC onwards, the Indus Valley civilization went into decline, along with many other Bronze Age cultures. Scientists know that this coincided with a global mega drought, which has been named the 4.2 kilo year or KA event. And it's thought likely that this caused famine, disease and social upheaval, transforming societies at the time. In this new study entitled Recurring Summer and Winter Droughts from 4,200 to 3,970 years ago in North India, and published in the journal Communications, Earth and Environment, Researchers reconstructed the summer and winter rainfalls in South Asia during the 4.2 Ka event by analysing trace elements as well as the oxygen, carbon and calcium isotopes of a speleotherm from the Dharamjali cave in the Himalaya. Their analysis looked at a time period between 4,200 and 3,100 years ago. It was especially important for researchers to understand how both the summer and winter rainfalls changed since both had a monsoon season that, prior to 4,200 years ago, impacted the floodplain. The floodplain was also heavily affected by melting snow and ice. During the study, the researchers found evidence for multiple droughts in both the summer and winter seasons over many generations. This change in water supply was abrupt and very different to the previous 1,000 years that had seen intense rainfall during both seasons and which had supported agricultural development. The research added further details to the 100 to 200 year mega drought that was known to have begun 4,200 years ago. It showed that there were several intensely dry periods lasting between 25 and 90 years each, which stretched out over 230 years overall. The length of these droughts also explains why it was difficult for Bronze Age societies to adapt. Farmers may have been able to cope with shorter dry periods, but droughts lasting several decades would have been difficult to adjust to. The collapse was characterised by a decrease in craft activities and long-distance trade, as well as the transition from large urban centres to smaller rural settlements. Archaeobotanical evidence shows that more drought-resilient crops were grown at this time and were probably sufficient for the populations of small villages that had begun to characterise the area inhabited by the formerly urban culture. The authors of the study also compared it with other pan-regional analyses pertinent to the 4.2 Ka event carried out previously, such as stalagmites from the Mamlu cave 1,200 kilometres away, an Arabian Sea Marine Corps and a Gulf of Oman sequel. This provided finer details on the way the 4.2 Ka event affected certain areas based on their different environmental conditions. Another point to make regarding the 4.2 Ka event is that the temple people in Malta who built more than 50 huge megalithic structures and appear to have thrived well, abandoned the islands at that time. The islands were then empty for around 200 years before a Bronze Age culture moved in. During the Fraxus project, which consisted of excavations carried out in Malta between 2013 and 2018, evidence was found for environmental degradation at that time, which probably led to the collapse of the temple people culture. It's likely the 4.2 Ka event caused this environmental degradation or was at least a significant contributing factor to it. Malta was still technically in the Neolithic at that time, but was still a part of what's been termed the Bronze Age collapse. What I find remarkable is that none of the most 
sophisticated Bronze Age cultures were able to survive the climatic anomaly. Well, in a way, I guess they did. Breaking up into smaller rural communities was a form of survival. But even though Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley civilization had similarities, it seems they also had many differences, and yet neither were able to adapt their grand urban centers, populations, and agricultural areas to the extreme aridity that began 4,200 years ago. In 2200 BC, Malta's Neolithic cultures seemingly died out or left the islands, and numerous Bronze Age societies experienced some form of disruption. Most experts agree the climatic anomaly played a huge role in this, but this isn't the only time this has happened. At many different times in prehistory and history, civilizations and communities have gone into decline because of drought or other extreme weather conditions. In these situations, there were direct effects on agricultural yields leading to famine and disease. And then there were indirect effects, such as the breakdown of power structures and societal change. In ancient Egypt, the idea of divine kingship was pretty clever as far as controlling the population went. However, when there were droughts, it was hard for the people to trust that their ruler was really as favoured by the deities as he had led everyone to believe. Suffering from famine and disease, these periods led to a breakdown of trust in the hierarchy, they led to rebellion, and they led to a fragmented society. Whilst researching this video on the collapse of the Indus Valley civilization, I realised I haven't actually done a video on the Indus Valley culture, and it's such an interesting one. So I'd like to delve a little bit deeper on that and do a video or several videos on different aspects of that civilization, such as the research that's been done into the Indus Valley script, the research that's been done into their religion, and the research that has been done into their urban layouts. I'll get to that at some point. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and thank you to my patrons, channel members, and super chatters for all your support. I'll catch up with you next time.